there everybody and welcome it's not tuesday it's wednesday and i've forgotten to put my microphone on so just give me one moment um but here i am with tuesday teaching tips now you might have noticed that i've become a little more erratic in my tuesday teaching tips i'm out of my old house and i'm not yet in my current house and all my teaching has changed to a wednesday so te tuesday teaching tips are becoming a little elusive for me they could well change to wednesday if so, I'd love to have a, a, an idea from you all, what we could call it, Wednesday Wisdom? Don't know, can't be Tuesday Teaching Tips though, can it? So I'm just going to pop on here today and um, talk a little bit about velocity and the importance of playing with freedom and flexibility at the piano right from the very start, really from the youngest children onwards. They can learn to play fast and playing fast you know when you watch some of these fantastic pianists around their velocity at the piano and the sound they get is just wonderful isn't it well it's not an elusive thing it, it can be something that we can all uh, work towards and our students can work towards but this word of the the words of freedom and flexibility are all important if we want to be playing fast at the piano but before I talk about that, I just want to um, say my piano has gone to have a lie down because I've moved out of my house. And where we are at the moment, I needed to have some sort of piano, obviously. And I've long wanted a digital piano. So, hey, I've got a digital piano now. And I have to say a big shout out, actually, to the people at Casio who um, I got my piano from because if you're not aware they have a fantastic deal on four teachers um, so that there is a, a, a great discount if you're part of their teachers network so you can get one of their lovely digital grand hybrids which is what I've got here and very fine it is as well so huge thank you to the people at Casio for recognizing the importance of teachers in this whole big scheme of learning the piano. And also a big shout out to the people at Piano Speed who moved my uh, piano out of our house most wonderfully and efficiently. And I hope in a two or three weeks time they're gonna be picking up my grand and this one as well and whisking it all the way up to Yorkshire. Um, interesting what they said was they've never been busier because so many people are buying and having pianos moved around for them. So it's good for us teachers to know that, isn't it? Back to this idea of velocity. So my lovely friend from the piano teachers called Ilga, um, who is one of the tu tutors, Ilga Pitkevica, um, she talked, first alert me to the importance really of velocity. So huge thanks to her. Lots of thanks to everybody today. Um, and the importance of really getting it uh, going from the early ages. And in our latest version of the Piano Framework, which we brought out this summer, Velocity has its very own subcategory. And one of the things we've suggested um, that we can do to help our youngsters in particular gain velocity at the keyboard is to set them little challenges with scales. Now, this could be pentascales. We can start early with pentascales or we can take it into scales themselves. And um, of course, posture is all important and you've got to make sure that their posture is right. You've got to make sure they're playing with freedom up here rather than just cramped onto the keys here. But it's, it's about that whole body and having the flexibility to be able to move across the whole of the piano. Why should we start just in one point? Middle C does not lead to free and flexible playing on the whole. It leads to cramped playing like this and everything being pushed in, which is why being able to, you know, just get them to move around the piano and some of the wonderful pieces that you can get these days where they go exploring, you know, being in outer space. Anyhow, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to talk about um, velocity and freedom and flexibility. And something I've been doing is using a metronome, just a very, very simple challenge of saying, okay, a major scale, pentascale or full, full diatonic scale, doesn't matter. Let's take the full diatonic scale for me. Let's say that I'm working with a grade two student, got A major, and you say, set the metronome, first of all, at 60 beats uh, 
60 beats per minute and I've got my metronome set up here it is nice and steady and now we're going to play the scale and we can do it either with long tonic or we can play it as quavers I'm going to do long tonic <laughs> carefully checking for a good sound and the correct fingering that's where the long tonic is really useful isn't it and then if they do that then and this is for their practice remember then they increase the speed maybe up to and it's up to you to completely to decide I'm going to go up to 72 today here we go and we listen again and same thing again so make sure we feel that keeping that same lovely flexibility and of course remember you don't want them to be playing down here you want that sense of being above one here with the keys so that's my 72 and then I'm going to stop that and the third speed might be and they would do all this in one session the third speed might be a bit more of a challenge like 86 can they do this quite slow still but for some children that will still be a little bit of a struggle not just children uh, I think um, adult learners as well and then maybe when they come back the next week that they will enjoy that challenge of getting that speed and when they come back the next week maybe you start at the 72 speed again and then go up to that second one which was 86 and then maybe you they can choose a, a, a faster speed to actually challenge themselves a little bit further what happens if they take it up to a hundred here we go let's try that what happens if they take out the long tonic ideally you're aiming to take them up even faster you know so 120 I'm just just, just going to finish off with going up to that 120 120 grade 2 will find quite a challenge I would say but it's not impossible for them and you know a lovely fluent grade 2 scale played like that super absolutely lovely if you can do that and it leads them then into playing with more freedom and more flexibility with their pieces and it leads them to be able to move around the, the keyboard and um, get this idea of velocity so i hope that's been helpful i shall be back next wednesday if you have any suggestions uh, for a Wednesday Facebook Live from me, rather than Tuesday Teaching Tips, because it's going to move to a Wednesday now, um, then do let us know. Do just um, just pop your, your, your thoughts in the comments below. I can see a few comments come in, then, in actually. And I'm sitting uh, for... Um, I'm sitting so I can read it. I can see Barbara's asking, do you press the key each time it ticks? No, the tick is the crotchet beat, Barbara. So here we go. Bum, 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 bum. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And I'm playing in quavers. Um, you know, if you wanted to challenge, you could take it up in semi quavers as well. But all right, I hope that's answered that. Hope to see you all again next week on Wednesday. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>